Hi there, my name is Gerardo Poli. I'm an emergency veterinarian at the Animal Emergency Service. And today in this video, I'm going to show you how to deliver effective CPR for your pets. And today we have our CPR mannequin, Bobby, with us. And we'll use Bobby to demonstrate how to do CPR. At the Animal Emergency Service, it's not uncommon for us to have to perform CPR sometimes half a dozen times a day on different pets that are brought down to us in critical states. Let's hope you never have to use CPR, but it's useful to know how to deliver it just in case you find yourself in a situation where it may be needed, where it may save your pet's life. So let's cover some basics. When do we start CPR? Well, you start CPR when one, your pet is not responsive, or two, your pet is not breathing, or three, when you can't feel that your pet has a heartbeat. So if you have any of those three things, then you start CPR straight away. But you might be thinking, well, how do I know if my pet really is in cardiopulmonary arrest? Well, the thing is though, the research shows that it's best to start CPR early than to wait just in case you're not sure if it was needed or not. And if you perform CPR the way I'm gonna to demonstrate today, then it's a fairly safe thing to do. So let's start with compressions. So we need to deliver 120 compressions per minute. That is two compressions a second. So often people uh, play in their head uh, the song by the Bee Gees, Staying Alive. So that is ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh, staying alive, staying alive, and that beat, that rate is around about 120 compressions per minute. So how do we deliver compressions? So the location of where you deliver compressions and the, the, and the form varies a little bit, but there's some fundamentals with how to deliver proper compressions. First of all, you wanna focus a lot of the pressure in a certain area. So you have one hand, another hand on top. Then. You don't want to compress with your arms. What you want to do is compress with your arms straight and pivot from your hips. So when you do compress down, all the force goes down your straight arms onto the pet's chest. How deep do you go? You go down or you compress a third to half the width of the chest. So hand over hand, straight arms, then compressing down half to a third of the chest or a third to half the depth of the chest. And then at a rate of 120 compressions per minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. So that's how you deliver compressions, the rate of how you deliver compressions. Once you've delivered 30 compressions, you have to deliver two breaths. So how do you deliver breaths for a pet? So what you do is you close the pet's mouth you create a seal with their lips in your hand and you expose the nostrils, okay? Sometimes your pet might have some fluid coming out of their mouth or nose, um, so you have to wipe that away. So close off the mouth, create a tight seal. Then you put your mouth on your pet's nose, create a seal with your lips and you blow into the nostrils. And two deep breaths. One, two. And then straight back to 30 compressions, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, et cetera. So you do that cycle, 30 compressions and two breaths, four times for a total of two minutes. And then what you do is you reevaluate. You check to see whether or not your pets regain consciousness, uh, whether or not they're breathing for themselves, whether or not you can feel a heartbeat or something like that. And if you have any of those signs, then stop CPR and then put your pet into recovery position. So recovery position is where they're on their side, head tilting down a little bit, so any fluid that comes out of the mouth uh, doesn't go back into their airways. If you've done your evaluation and your pet is not breathing still, not responsive, and doesn't have a heartbeat, then you gotta go straight back to 30 compressions, two breaths, 30 compressions, two breaths, 30 compressions, two breaths, 30 compressions, two breaths, another two minutes of that, and then reevaluate again. So there are some ways, there are some variations on how we deliver chest compressions to different size patients, because not all pets come at the same size. It's the same with humans, you have babies, all the way up to large adults, compressions vary a bit. So 
when it comes to large breed dogs, so let's say this is a 40 kilo uh, Rottweiler or a 30 kilo um, Labrador. So a large breed dog with kind of a round chest where they're kind of the same width as height, then what you wanna do is you wanna compress over the widest part of the chest, not over where the heart is. So what you do is you look at your pet and where their chest comes to the highest point, put your hands there and then compress down to a third or to half the depth of the chest, right? Push down over the widest part of the chest for large breed dogs. If you have a dog that's smaller than that, then, or a dog that is large, but has a keel chest, so it has a real narrow chest. These are dogs like greyhounds, um, also some Dalmatians also have keel chests. Even Great Danes can have keel chests. This particular chest conformation is best supported with CPR by performing cardiac CPR. This is where we actually put compressions or deliver our compressions directly over the heart itself. So not over the widest part of the chest, but over the heart. And where's the heart? What you do is you get your pet's elbow or leg and you bring it back to the chest and then where that elbow touches the chest, that is where you will do compressions. So instead of being right back, right back over the widest part, it is over the heart itself, and then you deliver your 30 compressions, two breaths, etc. So, what happens if you have uh, a small, smaller breed dog, like um, uh, a little Staffy, or maybe even like a, a Jack Russell or something like that? You would still deliver those chest compressions over where the heart is. So bring the elbow back to the chest and, and compress over there. So keel chested dogs or dogs less than 25-ish kilos, then what happens is you'll compress directly over the chest. If you've got a cat or an even smaller dog like a chihuahua, then what you may do is circumferential compressions. This is where you wrap your hands around the chest. So that one's hand, that one hand is going around the back, this hand is coming from the chest, and then with your thumbs, you're compressing over the heart but with your hands circumferentially around the pet, going to a depth of a third to half the depth of the chest. Finally, if you have a dog which has a barrel chest, so this is ones where they are wider than they are in depth. So bulldogs are a classic example. With those patients with that conformation of chest, we put them on their back and we deliver chest compressions over the sternum, same as what you would probably do for a human. So on their back and compressions over the sternum, two breaths and so forth. And you still compress down to a third to half the depth of the chest. If you have multiple people with you, then one person could focus on the chest compressions and another person can deliver the breaths. Ultimately, what you wanna do is get your pet down to the closest veterinary clinic or hospital that's near you. And if you have two people, then one person could do compressions in the back of the car while the other person's driving. And once you get to the vet clinic, rush your pet inside and an experienced veterinary team will continue CPR for you. I hope you found this video useful and it sheds some light on how to deliver effective CPR for your pets.